All right, everyone, it's time to talk about killing the boar, of course, killing the white farmer, those evil white devils out there in South Africa, the colonizers, even though they inhabited wide swaths of land before any other group permanently settled in them because nobody else had any interest in it, and the Zulus actually came into the country later, terrorizing the black population that was native as well. Nobody talks about that in the sense of uh, such socio-political concepts, but uh, it's true anyway. The Zulus were considered a, f a fearful uh, group of terrorists, actually, by the black tribes that inhabited parts of South Africa originally, and certainly they terrorized the white population as well that largely was getting along with that native population. It's only later that it became a racial issue. That subracial issue, by the way, is a foreign concept to people in the United States because they just see black. They say, oh, you're from Malawi? So basically you're Nigerian. They don't have any concept of the different sociopolitics, tribal structures, and the post-colonial shakeup of the borders there, leading to the fractious nature of some of those countries they're in. You've got the same basic separatistic principle in part in South Africa, by the way. The country's borders, up in what used to be French Africa, the borders make even less sense. Now, by the way, there's a reason why Sudan got cut in two. <laughs> there's a reason why these countries keep splitting up and reforming and invading one another. In the United States, you'd be like, well, why don't you have black pride? Why would the Nigerians threaten Niger? <laughs> but we don't understand. They're all black. Why don't they get along? Yeah, that's a bit, you, Europeans were so good at that, by the way, for such a long time. It's not like there have been several major wars in the last hundred years over the principle. Yeah, just because people have a similar skin color, and that's not even always applicable, doesn't mean that they have exactly the same culture. Anyway, I wanted to uh, talk about this particular uh, bad take on the Kill the Boar song. Uh, Malema and some of the others uh, were, uh, were singing basically Kill the White Farmer. Uh, th this is a, considered a patriotic song in South Africa. This is the New York Times take on it. Kill the Boar song fuels backlash in South Africa and U.S. Yeah, uh, I mean, that part's not false. Right-wing commentators claim that an old anti-apartheid chant is a call to anti-white violence, but historians and the left-wing politician who embraces it say it should not be taken literally. Well, there are several problems with this. If I took an old Confederate song uh, and, and tried to present it in that historical context and said, well, the fact that I'm singing the song doesn't make me bigoted in any way. Yeah, it's, a, it's about lynching black people or something like that. But you got to understand it in its historical context. It was really a backlash against Reconstruction or something, post-Civil War. Do you think that a left-wing commentator would be making this argument uh, to defend me? Probably not. Uh, well, I, I can correctly point out various songs from that period that really, they're not so much hate for minority groups as they are anti-reconstructionism. It was basically, thank God Lincoln's dead, too bad the people that he put in control are, are still there, and uh, the carpetbaggers and shit like that, leading to the Gilded Age, by the way, and then the uh, uh, post-monopolistic backlash of the Progressive Era, which in the end created more monopolies than it ever busted, but we digress. The fact is that the song does have a racial component. It's literally, it's Kill the White Farmer is literally the name of the song. <laughs> okay, can you imagine, a left-wing commentator, if you had a song, if you were, uh, if, if Borat's uh, Throw the Jew Down the Well song were made by anyone other than by, by uh, Sasha Baron Cohen, who happens to be Jewish, and you know, obviously that's comedic in nature, if it were made by someone who wasn't Jewish and doing it in the comedic setting, would somebody assume that it was comedic, or would they go completely apeshit? Unless they understood the backdrop of it. Well, you can make a similar insinuation about this, but again, there's plenty. Of, look at the uh, Join the Clan song that people have uh, circulated around 4chan and stuff, and the various offshoots that were made more recently. It's almost a meme of memes. It's a meme of, of bigoted music from you know, the 20s and 30s and stuff like that. There are some real humdingers from the 1910s, 20s, and 30s, often involving watermelon um, and things of that nature. And there are also a lot of body songs that are way over the top sexual. <laughs> it's all insinuated as opposed to liberal, but uh, literal, but uh, your great grandparents, they liked their weird music. Yeah, my girl's pussy is always clean. She's always, <laughs> stuff like that. And at the beginning of the song, the cat goes meow, and it's like, I don't think that's the pussy you're talking about. The song is explicitly racial in nature. 
I would point out the other problem, which is that there are a bunch of killings of white farmers all the time in South Africa. It's a regular occurrence. Groups of, of Zulu thugs, which is basically what they are, they're, they're proudly Zulu in heritage, going out into farmland, uh, out into the Bordurai, to go and slaughter people. It happens on like a daily basis almost, as a huge number of killings of white farmers and their racial attacks. They're just not perceived as being so by people in the dumb part of the world that doesn't understand colonialism at all. Americans especially have a, a relative lack of knowledge of the goings-ons in the rest of the world because we never really had that. We're considered colonizers for kicking a bunch of hunter-gatherers with no permanent settlements into uh, territorial areas that were more marginal, even though in some cases it was agreed to by the people actually running the, uh, the show at the time that we could have the land. It had nothing to do with the United States needing to bargain with anyone, for example, when you're sold land by France, having already colonized it. The French were the colonizers in most of the uh, territorial U.S., the Spanish mainly the rest. Uh, and then the British stole a bunch of land from people, too. The United States was largely expanding into rugged wilderness that was virtually uninhabitable for most purposes by people without modern technology. Again, your history books don't really tell you that. But Americans, generally, they don't, they don't understand. Like, when they look at a map of Africa, if they can even name more than two of the countries, geography is not particularly well taught in U.S. schools. Nor, I think, in European schools outside of European geography, by the way. It's very sad. Geography is fascinating. I used to read the Atlas all the time and try to memorize all the countries, capitals, biggest cities, mountain ranges, rivers, and lakes, and so forth. Got pretty good at it. I can still name most of them today. Uh, because you got to understand... When you look at a map of Africa, a lot of that is post-colonial redrawing uh, of territory. Africa had been cut up by the French, the British, etc., etc., into chunks, the Germans to a small extent, and Italians, uh, and the Belgians. <laughs> Those poor people definitely had it worse than any of the others. Look up uh, King Leopold in the Belgian Congo and uh, tell me what you see. It's not a pretty sight. Uh, I don't know why the Belgians were so uniquely murderous in their colonies, but uh, at some point, other people got involved and said, you know, the British and French, I think, told them to knock it off because it was so butcherous. And when you, you know, cut a hand off half the population, it doesn't exactly increase productivity and workflow. Uh, but uh, when you look at that map, a lot of it has nothing to do with the original tribal arrangements. Like, people think, most Americans think South Africa, okay, was originally populated by black people, so the whites are foreigners. A large chunk of that land was not inhabited by anybody. There was no tribe to call it home. It was, it was the hinterland. Nobody gave a shit about uh, what became the Orange State. Nobody was there. Transvaal and some of these other things. Uh, the Zulus hadn't arrived yet. They're from further north. They invaded the Boer land that had been claimed while working peacefully with the native black population, which was scarce and which hadn't inhabited the area anyway and had no problem with the Boers by and large. Of course, you're always going to have an incursion or two, but it didn't boil over into warfare till the Zulus arrived. So yes, kill the Boer. I mean, if someone made a song called Kill the Zulu, would the liberal commentators be saying, well, it's, we have to understand it in its socio-political context. This is a protest song. It's a protest against farm killings. No, they call it a racist anthem. How dare these white farmers have a song that says, Kill the Zulu. I bet there's probably a song by some grindcore band local there in Pretoria that probably is called Kill the Zulu, but uh, yeah. Uh, anyway, I just thought that the New York Times take was so goddamn stupid. Oh my god, these evil right-wing racists are misinterpreting an anti-apartheid song. It literally says, Kill the Farmer, since apartheid is now over, why sing it? It's sort of like when the Lost Causers, uh, Razor Fist uh, raising his hackles at the moment, uh, uh, talks about like, uh, you know, old Confederate songs or something like that. You know, come and come Jane the Cavalry, something like that. It's like, well, you know, you would point out the Civil War is over, but you're singing it because of its historical context. Okay, that's fine. Be even handed in your analysis, though. The New York Times ain't good at doing that. That's about all. Peace out.